Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, in this video, we are going to get our character to be able to not go past the right side or left side of the screen. And we will also work on generating our enemy objects at the top. So let's get started. The borders on the left and right side of the screen, um, fixing that's actually pretty easy. So we're gonna go to our ship.py file. And in his update function, where it updates his position, these lines right here, as soon as we update his rect attribute, uh, we will do this. We'll check, uh, we'll do an if statement. If self.rect.x is less than or equal to zero, meaning he, if he's touching the left side of the screen, or, or going past the left side of the screen, then we're gonna assign his self.rect.x zero. This will lock him at the left side of the screen. So if you keep moving left and he eventually goes past it, it locks him back to zero. And you'll see that in just a second. We also need to check for the right side of the screen. So we can do elif self.rec.x is greater than or equal to the display width, which is the right side of the screen. And we have to subtract his width because remember the origin point of an image is the top left corner. So we need to subtract his width from this. So self.rect.width. Then the self.rect.x is assigned the display width minus self.rect.width. So that should fix that. So let's run it. Bam. He doesn't go past the right. He doesn't go past the left. And he can still shoot. Good. Okay, so let me kind of explain how I want to do the enemies. The way I want to do them, I'm going to make an enemy object, but I also want something kind of in the background controlling all the enemy objects and to where you can write logic for how the enemy objects spawn on a certain, on a, like a timely manner. Like I don't, I want something to be able to have like a timer. It says, hey, in between like one and five seconds, spawn an enemy. That's all, it's like a random timer goes off that spawns a new enemy from the top of the screen. Um, and I, I don't want that to be our main file. Again, I'm trying not to clutter this thing up as much as possible. So I'm going to end up making two files. I'm going to make an enemy uh, object. And we'll actually go ahead and make that first, and then I'll make the other file I was talking about, because this one will be pretty simple. Oh, and if you don't know, I already imported. You can use any, any image you want for this, but I've already imported an enemy.png file. It's just one of the enemies from Galaga. And that's the image we're going to be using. So we need to import pygame. We're gonna use our constants files, import constants as C. And I want to, I don't think I need random for this. So if I do, I'll import it later, but I don't think I do. Uh, class enemy, it's gonna inherit from the sprite object. If it, all, all this code's pretty much just gonna be copy and paste from what we've been doing previously. Our super method. self.image equals pygame.image.load and we're loading in that enemy.png file and don't forget to do our convert alpha to put it in the nice data that pygame wants it to be in if you don't do that it will go really slow uh, then we need our rect attributes so self.image.get rect uh, let's do I do, actually, yeah, I do want to import random because every time we create an enemy, his starting X value will always be a random value because he's going to come from the top of the screen and I always want it to be random. I don't want him to always come from zero, zero at the top left. So his starting self.rec.x will equal random.randrange. And it'll be a value between zero and the display width. And we actually, again, need to subtract his self.rec.width so he doesn't show up off screen. And his Y coordinate, I also don't want to be zero because then you'll just kind of see him blip into existence. And so I want him to start a little bit above the screen so you actually see him come down uh, he doesn't just like instantaneously appear on the screen. So self.rec.y equals um, negative self.rec.height. 
and that should fix that. So it, it's essentially zero, which is the top of the screen, and we're subtracting his height, so he appears one sprite height above the screen. So he comes in smoothly. Then we'll need a self.velocity x equals zero, self.velocity y, and I want them all to have random speeds, so I don't know why I didn't think I knew, need the random module. I'm using it a lot. Uh, random.rand range. I want their speed to be between three and eight pixels per frame. That should be good. Let's make our update method. So self.rec.x plus equals self.velocityx and self.rec.y plus equals self.velocityy. Okay, so in order to put one of these guys on the screen, I would need to go to our main file, and somewhere in here I would need to start like writing some logic for how enemies are created. But that's a, that's a decent chunk of code, and I don't want to have to put a decent chunk of code in this main file. Again, I want the goal is to keep this as clean as possible. And uh, I already, it's way too cluttered for my taste right now, but again, this is a basics video, so it's cluttered for a reason, because it's actually, it's a little bit easier to understand. But once your game gets big, this file can get really complicated. So it's it's best to keep as much stuff out of this file as possible. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new object called enemy spawner. And this, you can think of this like this invisible entity in the background that controls how enemies spawn. And this main file will contain an enemy spawner object. And the enemy spawner object, as long as we run its update function in our main file, it will know how to control all the logic for generating enemies on the screen. So uh, we got our enemy spawner object. Did I, did I not make it? I thought I made it. Enemy, could have swore I just made it. Uh, Python file, enemy spawner. Yes, I didn't make it. Okay, anyway. Um, we need to import pygame, and then we also want to, it's going to be accessing the enemy object. So we need to do from the enemy file, import the enemy object. So class, enemy spawner. And it's not a sprite, so we don't need to inherit from the sprite class. And we need to make a constructor function. And what are some things it's going to have? It's going to maintain, it's going to have its own enemy list. So enemies, or we'll call it an enemy group, because it'll it's a group just... Uh, like all the other groups we've made. So pygame.sprite.group. Uh, what else does it need? Um, it needs a timer. Um, we call it, we'll call it a spawn timer. And the way I'm going to organize this, I'm going to have, because I'm going to try and make everything variable. So spawn timer max. This is what the timer starts out at. So random.rand range. Oh, we need to import random. Because I'm going to have a random timer go off, so these enemies aren't, again, spawning in a rhythmic manner. They're always kind of random. You'll see, like, one come down, then another, then another, then another. So you get what I'm trying to say. So import random. Uh, so the, the starting, or the max value that the timer can be... Actually, no. Never mind. Don't do that. So we'll just make a, a variable called spawn timer, and it equals a random number between... Uh, let's say between half a second and two seconds, which would be 120. So 30 frames is half a second, 120 is uh, two seconds. Uh, we'll make its update function, which we'll pass for now. But I want to make another method it can do, and that's called, uh, we'll call spawn enemy. And when we call this function, what it's going to do is make a new enemy, which equals an enemy object. And it's going to add that enemy uh, object to its enemy group. Now, during its update function, it has its own group it needs to start updating. So we'll do self.enemygroup.update. That way, in our main file, when we run the enemy spawner's update function, it knows to, in turn, run it, the enemy group update function. All right, uh, so we got spawn enemy. And we also, so in its update function, we also need to decrement the timer that we made up here. And every time it hits zero, we run the spawn enemy function. So we'll do this. If self.spawn timer equals zero, self.spawn enemy. And then we need to reset the timer to something random again. So self.spawn timer 
equals random dot rand range between 30 and 120. Uh, that, sh that should be it. But now what we need to do in our main file, because that's this is the class for the en enemy spawner, but the enemy we haven't actually made an enemy spawner object yet. So in our object setup right here, we'll do uh, we need to import from enemy spawner import enemy spawner and let's make an enemy spawner object enemy spawner equals enemy spawner so now we have an enemy spawner object and I'm going to put that right here enemy spawner dot update so every frame of our game we run that enemy spawner update function which in turn already knows how to update all the enemies that are on the screen now we need to draw all the enemies on the screen and the way we're going to do that is right here we'll do um we'll access our enemy spawner and then we can access its enemy group and then we can draw and we're drawing them to the display so let's see if that works hopefully i didn't make any typos i don't see any enemies yet so let's troubleshoot that um, so let's go to our enemy file uh, actually here we'll do this this is how I usually troubleshoot just print something so if an enemy actually does get spawned it's clearly gonna run its update function or it should because in the enemy spawner uh, update function which we are running in main we're running all the update functions on the enemies um, so if we go to enemy and print.t if an enemy does get generated we just can't see it we'll see a bunch of T's start popping up in the uh, terminal so let's wait two seconds so it doesn't look like any enemies are being spawned I think I know why um, enemy spawner we never decremented the timer yeah see it picked a random value for the timer up here and we check to see if it equals zero but nowhere in our update function are we actually decreasing it ever so it can't ever hit zero to spawn an enemy um, so else self dot spawn timer minus equals one so that decrements it every time until it hits zero and then it resets it to something else So there's our enemies. Uh, one thing I forgot to do, the same with our ship. Remember how we had to transform them up because he was too small? Well, these enemies I got off the same sprite sheet. They're too small as well. So let's go to our enemy object. And uh, right after we up, uh, import the image, we'll do self.image equals pygame.transform.scale. What are we wanting to scale? We're wanting to scale the image. And then we need to pass a tuple for the height and, or the width and height we want to scale it to. So self.image.getWidth multiplied by 3 and self.image.getHeight multiplied by 3. So that should scale them up. There you go. Cool. And there we go. That's uh, We got enemies on the screen. The next video, what we're probably going to cover, I'm going to add music. I'm going to add sound effects. And I honestly, those don't take that long. It probably won't fill up a whole video. If we have time at the end, I'll also uh, I'll get collision detection working where we can actually shoot the enemies. Uh, maybe because uh, that's kind of complicated and that can that's definitely a whole video in itself. But we'll see. But we're definitely adding music and um, sound effects on the next video. Have a good one.